Hey, what's up everybody? It's Dallas with Gadget Hacks, and as part of our Android Basics series, today I'm going to show you how to install a custom ROM. Now, custom ROMs are one of the coolest things about Android. They're created by third-party developers using Android's open source code base, and they entirely replace the operating system on your phone or tablet to give you all sorts of cool custom options. To install a custom ROM, however, you will need a custom recovery. But if you'd like some more information about that aspect of it, we've covered it in the past with multiple videos and articles, so check out the full tutorial for this one over on GadgetHacks.com. But beyond that, the first step you'll need to take is to download a copy of the custom ROM while your phone still has its previous operating system up and running. Now where do you get these, you may ask? Well, there's a bunch of different sources, but primarily XDA Developers is a great source for custom ROMs for all types of devices. Then of course you've got CyanogenMod, which is a custom ROM that supports hundreds of different devices. But if you're looking for a starting point, I've got a few links for you over in step two of my full tutorial. Then beyond just the ROM zip, there's a second file that you'll more than likely want to download. This one is the gapps package, which is essentially all of Google's apps and services bundled into a flashable zip that can be installed on top of your custom ROM. And I'd actually say gapps are almost a requirement because most custom ROMs do not come with Google services bundled. So to be able to install apps from the Google Play Store, you'll need to grab the gapps. But there are different versions of the gapps package for different devices and different ROMs. So to help with all that, I've got an easy to use tool linked out at the full tutorial. Then beyond that, you may also want to take this time to install a custom kernel. One of these can bring lots of cool extra features like the ability to overclock your CPU adjust your display color calibration, or even add double tap to wake functionality. So to sum that all up, the ROM file is required, the G apps are recommended, and the custom kernel is optional. But once you have any of these files saved to your device, the next step will be to boot into custom recovery. To get started with that, make sure to power your device completely off. From here, it'll go in one of two different directions. If you're using a Samsung device, press and hold the volume up, home, and power buttons simultaneously and your device will boot directly into custom recovery. Otherwise, for all other Android devices, press and hold the volume down and power button simultaneously, which will eventually take you to Android's bootloader menu. From here, press the volume down button twice to highlight the recovery mode option, and then press the power button to select it. Then once you've made it into custom recovery, there's a little bit of prep work you'll need to do before you can flash the ROM and associated files. For starters, you should make a Nandroid backup to make sure you have a fallback plan in case anything goes wrong with your custom ROM. So tap the backup button from TWRP's main menu, then leave everything selected as it currently is, and swipe the slider at the bottom of the screen to perform that backup. That'll take as much as 15 minutes to complete, but when it's finished, head back out to TWRP's main menu by tapping the home button. From here, you'll need to get rid of your existing operating system and all of its associated files to make sure that it doesn't conflict with your new custom ROM. So to take care of that, go ahead and tap this wipe button in the top right corner, and then choose advanced wipe on the second screen. From here, tick the boxes next to Dalvik, System, Data, and Cache, and then swipe the slider at the bottom of the screen. Once you're done there, head back out to TWRP's main menu again, because now you're ready to flash your custom ROM. With this part, it's very important that you flash the ROM file itself before you flash any other zips. So go ahead and tap this install button, then navigate to your device's download folder and select the custom ROM file. From here, just swipe the slider at the bottom of the screen to install your custom ROM. And at this point, if your ROM came with an aroma installer interface, you'd see a GUI pop up where you can select customization options for tweaking various settings. Otherwise, like with this ROM, you'll just see a wall of text scrolling by as TWRP installs the ROM on your device. When that's all finished though, you can go two different directions depending on the files that you downloaded. If you only wanted to install the custom ROM and you did not download gapps to get Google's apps and services, then you could just go ahead and hit the reboot system button right here at this point. However, if you do intend on flashing more zips, just go ahead and tap this back button here to head back to the install zips menu. From here, now that your base ROM has been installed, it really doesn't matter what order you flash any subsequent zips in. But for simplicity's sake, I'm going to go ahead and select the gapps package next. Then just like with the ROM file, simply swipe the slider at the bottom of the screen to get all of Google's apps and services installed on your phone. Once that's finished, of course you can hit the reboot system button if that's all you plan on flashing today. But if you're going to also install a custom kernel, go ahead and hit that back button again. From here, the process should already be familiar by now. So go ahead and select your custom kernel zip, 
then swipe the slider at the bottom of the screen. Finally, when all of your zips are flashed, go ahead and tap the reboot system button at the bottom of the screen. Now this first boot is going to take quite a bit longer than normal. It may even take as much as 10 to 15 minutes to finish booting up. But that's only this first time, so give it a little while to finish booting back up, and then I'll get right back with you. When that's all finished though, you'll need to sign into your Google account and run through initial setup for your custom ROM, but at that point you're ready to get off and running. And I know this may have been a lot to absorb from one video, so if you'd rather follow along at your own pace, be sure to check out my full tutorial over on GadgetHacks.com. As always though, we'd appreciate it if you would like and comment on this video and subscribe to our channel. So we'll see you again next time folks, but until then, happy gadget hacking.